All right, Shalom, Akio. This is the brother Yawala from GMS Chicago. I'd like to start off by giving all praises and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and teach well. And uh, salutations to Yaakim out there in the four corners of the earth, pushing out this word in truth and in sincerity. And, uh, you know, it's just a, a response uh, to the brother Karab uh, video, uh, Edomites, the Caucasians have no hope. You know, and, uh, you know, without further ado, I'm just going to go straight into it. There's uh, Hebrews 12 and 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. So, you know, you got to keep in mind, this is the Bible speaking right here. This is Hebrews in the New Testament. You know, so in the, in the scripture, there's a profane person called Esau. It says, for, for who so for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterwards, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. You know, and that's the Most High, man. He rejected him. You know, that that's a straight cut in the New Testament uh, against these uh, uh, these people that say uh, everyone can be saved. That as long as they repent and they go back to the Lord, they can be saved. No, you, you got right here in the New Testament uh, that same vibration being pushed. It says. For ye know how that afterwards, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. It says right there, he, he sought it carefully with tears. Meaning he was crying, he was begging for, for the Most High to, you know, to forgive him that, that he had repented. Because he wanted his blessing back. You know, but guess what? You know, the, the Lord gave him no place for repentance. Verse 16, it, it tells him he's, he's a profane person. You know, and the, he and the, there's really nobody uh, else that, that's a fornicator as him, man. He he's completely contrary. Therefore, you have no hope, man. There's no salvation to your Edomites. You know, I'm gonna keep going. There's uh numbers, you know, and we're gonna give a couple accounts, you know, because you still have to pay. There's really no hope, man. You gotta pay for everything that you've done to to the Native Americans, to the Latinos and the Negroes, man. You know, you still haven't paid for it, and you know, according to to the Lord's word, you know, you 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 have to, you still have a debt to pay, man. This is uh, Numbers thirty-five and thirty-three. It says, "So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it." You know, so if somebody kills a person and and the blood falls upon the ground. That ground is defiled, man. It's it's unclean. And the only way that you can make it clean again is by shedding the blood of the man that shed it. You know, blood for blood. You know, and, and, and this land right here in America is, is completely defiled, man. You know, there's over 100 million Native Americans that were killed right here. And that's just counting the Native Americans. Uh, that's not counting the so-called Negroes, you know. Um... And guess what? You haven't paid for that, Esau. You so-called Caucasians. So, you know, the Lord still has to come cleanse this land. Man. So there's really no hope. There's there's no way that you can squeeze out of it. There's no, oh, I'm cool with the with the Israelites, so I'm going to get out of this thing as long as I'm with him. No, nah, it's, it's none of that, man. It's not, even though you, you seek it with tears, man, and whether you realize it and repent, guess what? There's no there's there's no hope for you man you know and this is why this is uh isaiah 55 and 11 it says so shall my word be that so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void and that word void goes into a uh, slack yeah slack yeah and that word uh, void uh, means uh, empty, man. You know, so the word of the Lord is not going to come back to him empty. Everything that he says, he sets out, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to complete its task. Like it says, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where, where to I sent it. You know, so everything that the Lord does, everything that the Lord says is, is forever, man. It's perpetual. There's no breaking it. In uh, Malachi uh, 3 and 6, it says, uh, 
He said, I am the Lord, I change not. So, so my son Jacob is not consumed, man. You know? So guess what? That numbers uh, that we just read, numbers 35 and 33, you know, the way of cleansing the land, it's, it's still here, man. Because this is the word of the Lord. This is one of his commandments. So the only way, you know, that this land could ever be cleansed is through the death of, of all those Edomites, man. You know? It, it, the the word is not gonna come back void, man. The Lord is gonna accomplish what He says to what He what He what He He has set out to do, man. You know, and and, and we're gonna give more examples of the word that the Lord said is gonna happen, man. And, and guess what? It's gonna happen, man. It's not gonna come back void, man. You guys have no hope. There's no hope, man. The Lord does what He does, man. If he's gonna say He said He's gonna do something. He's gonna do it. There ain't no ifs or or maybes, man. He's gonna do it. You know, is uh, is didn't his son say uh, uh, Yahweh Shai? Didn't he say, "Let your yeas be yeas and your nays be nays"? It is what it is, man. If you say if, if that's that's the whole spirit with the with the Most High and His Son and Israel. If you say you're gonna do something, you're gonna do it. You know, so really, there's no hope, man. He it's already been spoken, so your your fate is sealed, man. Your fate is sealed. This is another thing that that the Lord said. This is Obadiah 1 and 18. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame. And, the, you know, because we're going to be on fire, man. You know, uh, bringing judgment on Esau, man. The Lord said he, uh, uh, Israel is his battle axe, man. So he, he uses us to, to fight, man. It says, uh, but, you know, that's not going to be until he comes back and delivers us out of this place. You know, because we can't do nothing right now. Esau still has dominion. You know, it says, uh, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire and the house of Joseph a flame and the, ho and the house of Esau for stubble and they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau for Yahweh has spoken it. And there goes that word that the Lord sent out, man. He spoke that word already, you know, so it's not going to come back to him void. It's a promise. It's a guarantee. There is, once again, man, there's no hope. You know, that is if you believe the Bible, man, which which majority of you Edomites, you don't believe in the scriptures. But guess what, man? When the Lord comes back with his chariots and, and that and that fear gets instilled into you, then then you're going to then you're going to see, man, what it really is. You know, I'm going to keep going. This is uh, Malachi chapter one, verse one. It says the burden of the word of Yahweh to Israel by Malachi. It says, I have loved you, saith Yahweh. Yet ye say, uh, ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith Yahweh? Yet I love Jacob, and I hated Esau. So the Lord hates you, es uh, Esau, you Edomites, man. You know, it says, uh, and I laid his mountain and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. It says, you know, but my, I want to keep reading. My point is at the end of uh, verse 4. It says, whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished. But we will return and build a desolate place. Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. They shall call, and it says, they shall call them the border of wickedness. So see, the Lord even already gave you a title, man. You know, it, your, one of your titles is the border of wickedness. So if he names you that name, <laughs> that means that you're, that you're sealed to be that way, man. It's not going to be like one day. You know, you're not going to be the border of wickedness no more. <laughs> you know, the Lord already gave you that title. Yeah, that means because he, that means that you own it. man. You own that. You are the border of wickedness. It says, and the people against whom Yahweh have indignation forever. This is forever, man. This, this is going to include the time when the Lord comes back, man. He's still going to have that anger, that uh, indignation, which means righteous anger. Towards you, Edomites, man. So, what what hope is there in you to 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 wait on the Lord and think that He's gonna come and uh, you know, forgive you all, man? There ain't no forgiveness for the treachery that you've done in, in this world, man. There's no forgiveness for none of that, man. You guys are done, man. You guys just just waiting out. You guys are in death row, man. You guys are on the green mile. You know. It's over for you Edomites, man.
you know, because the Lord has said it, man. His His word does not come back void. You know, and, and then for, for you scoffers that want to say that uh, this is the Old Testament, we're going to read it in the New Testament also. This is the, uh, the same thing. This is uh, Romans chapter 9, verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. He says, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? The Most High forbid. You know, because it says it again, uh, what was written in Malachi. It says, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So this man, you know, this nation that came out of this man, the Lord hates him. It says, and then it's going to explain it. It's going to say, is there unrighteousness with the Most High? The Most High forbid. For he, he, he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I, ha I will have compassion. So then it, it is not of him that willeth, you know, because Esau sought repentance with tears man he really willed it man he was like oh please Bob, like please uh you know um you know forgive me he he damn sure willed it it says nor him that runneth so there's nothing that you can do you could do all this work you know try to get on the good side of the lord it says but of the most high that showeth mercy because verse 14 15 just says he will have mercy on whomsoever you shall have mercy and guess what man you could do everything that you want. You could will as much as you want. You could run it, you know, to try, uh, you know, try to do good works. Uh, but it's it, up to the Lord, man, who He want to show mercy on. And guess what? You were not shown mercy, man. You know, and it is what it is. It's written in the scriptures plainly, man. Uh, uh, Ezekiel, uh, uh, Ecclesiastes three and sixteen, if I'm not mistaken, it says there's no end to a people. So guess what? Uh, you Edomites are still here, man. And you guys are ruling right now. You know, um, it's an apocrypha. It says uh, Esau is the end of the world, but Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. So the last people that are ruling in the world is you so-called Caucasians, man. You know, you Edomites. You know, it's already written, man. That you have no repentance. Verse 17, and this is the point why why you, why you were brought up, man. Why, why, you were, uh, why you're in this kingdom right now. It says, uh, for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared through all the earth. You know, so he's doing the same thing to you Edomites that he did with Pharaoh in Egypt. You know, he's making you guys prideful, giving you that, that prideful heart, you know, to try to come against the Most High. You can build, build up your weapons. So that when you, he comes back, you try fighting him, man. But through you, he's going to show his power. He said, that I might show my power in thee. You know, because he's going to destroy you guys, man. He's going to break you guys. You guys are going to fight. But guess what? He's gonna. It, there's going to be no hope in your fight, man. Really no hope. You know? And, and it is what it is, man. You know, if you brothers go, go watch... Uh, the Elder Karaz video, he goes into it in depth, man. Scripture upon scripture. Uh, the nation of Esau, of Edom, uh, you so-called Caucasians, man, th there's no hope for you guys. You guys are, are the are the villains in, in, in this uh, play of, of, of the world history, man. And Jacob, you so-called Latinos and Native Americans, you guys are, uh, you guys, uh, are the good guys, man, you know which is ultimately the elect of Israel because not all Israel is Israel you two thirds are going to go down with this Edomite as well you know uh, but you know with that uh, I'm going to wrap it up hopefully the elect out there was edified uh, once again I like to give all honor and glory to Yahweh about Shimei uh, Shai. double honors to, your, uh, to the apostles of Great Millstone who taught us this word um, and uh Salutations to Yaakim out there, uh, pushing out this word with us, in truth and sincerity. And with that, I'm going to say Shalom. And you Edomites don't have no hope, man. Shalom.